through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 249. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of Pain and Gain, we're talking Ed Harris, a guy who's been great as a lead actor, who's yes. been great as a supporting actor, who's just playing great yeah, Great all as a over. villain, great as a hero. Yep, exactly. Yeah. We're going to talk about a variety of stuff. Again, he's one of those guys that's done so many interesting things. We're not going to touch upon everything, yes. so if there's something you really like that we don't mention, please put it in the comments mm -hmm. so we can carry on the discussion after, but there's just far too many things, or else, yes. unless you want like a three-hour our podcast yeah. it's not it's for not example happen. we can only even talk about one movie that he did that where he went into space only one I'm not gonna talk. Yeah. Yeah. you yeah. can guess which one yeah <laughs> suspenseful <laughs> let's get started though and we're going to begin at the end of the 80s yes uh sci-fi classic we're talking james cameron here the abyss oh love the abyss so much you know, The Abyss is kind of an interesting film, you know, it is it is a sci-fi movie and that there's non-terrestrial mm -hmm. entities in it, but it's also sort of this unique uh, film that's also during the Cold War. You know, mm. you've got the Americans and the Soviets rushing to yes. uh, get to the su un sub that sunk. Um, well, on their way there, they run into some non-terrestrial ah. things, but it's it's I mean it's a really sort of interesting sort of mashup of sci-fi and reality at the same yeah, time. I would and agree. Ed Harris plays one of the um, Americans going to recover yes. this sub and who sort of sacrifices himself for humanity to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know, like I think it was something like 55 or 56 percent of all the principal photography was shot underwater. Uh, all the crew. James Cameron freaking loves his underwater I stuff. I, I, I feel like I would have to go back and look chronologically and see maybe where it started in film, but I feel like if this isn't where it started, this is definitely where he Rana. got like, oh yes, yes, that's <laughs> definitely where it started. This is just, I think this is probably where he had the budget though to really yeah. do it like he wanted to. I mean, everybody, every, all the crew members became certified divers. Wow. The oxygenated water, which really outside of the extraterrestrials is the only element for me as a kid that I thought was like sci-fi. Mm -hmm. The rest seemed relatively sure. understandable, yeah. but that's an actual thing that exists. That's they had uh, two doctors from Duke University that pioneered the, tec the technique and consulted on the film. Wow. Even to the extent that all the rats that they used in the film lived, contrary to the rumor that they died, that they suffocated. Yeah, five rats. Yeah, they whatever. full on lived through that. The only reason they cut away, if you watch it, when they cut away to the actress' face to see the reaction, is because once the water fully submerges the rats, they tend to shit themselves, and they didn't want to show that up. Re real, real effects notwithstanding, though, this film also won the Academy Award for visual effects. I totally mean, you know, understandable. Totally makes sense. It was great. It was very ahead of its time. You know, makes sense with James Cameron. You know, where his career has gone. You know, with yep. Avatar, mm -hmm. Titanic, all that sort of stuff. That, that makes that sense. Crazy. He loves water, his effects. The water scene, which yeah. if it wasn't for it being so successful. T2 never would have happened, yeah. probably. Or this wouldn't have been successful. You also gotta realize, like, dude has a love for Michael Bean. Like, yes, coming this back is true. from you know, the Terminator, mm -hmm. once again, sort of like a, a Navy SEAL. Yep. We've talked about yep. this before. Yep. You know, he, dude likes to be a Navy SEAL. Yeah, he's a Navy SEAL three times, I think, in his career. One of the other times, which we'll talk about. The third time being the movie Navy SEALs. Yeah, and usually it doesn't work out so well for him. No, but, it really yeah. doesn't, sadly. I still like you, Michael <laughs> yeah. Bean. I'm not gonna I'm yeah. not gonna shit on you. But I mean, this movie must have been incredibly hard to make because all oh, the, yeah. most of the actors did all their own stunts, like most of the underwater work they did. Ed Harris nearly drowned at one point while trying to make what well, do one of the shots where essentially he got tangled mm -hmm. and couldn't get to a regulator in time and he freaked out and now set, has stated, I'm not talking about the abyss and I never will. And it's an interesting sort of message movie, you know, it's talking about like the self-destructive ways of humans and yeah. sort of, you know, it's maybe a little bit heavy, but I mean, I respect the message i believe it Definitely. i mean i don't disagree with what yeah. it's saying but you know maybe i think i think it's got a message but i think it does a good job at not making the message too heavy-handed yeah. especially because you have people on both sides fighting for their various opinions and then there's kind of a third consensus i feel that's reached later in the third act of the film so. oh yeah i mean well the, the aliens are going to kill well, yeah. everyone <laughs> and it wasn't until his sacrifice that you know you finally get that Gotta love aliens yeah. that are just prepared to put yeah, you know, the red button to wipe out humanity. You gotta respect that they change their minds, too. That's good. <laughs> That's I mean, it's, I always imagine they'll be like Independence Day and just completely blow us away. At least it's these true. are sort of like, you know, feel thoughtful aliens. I always also appreciated as a child or as a younger person in general that this was one of those ideas that took the the unknown in the deep mm -hmm. rather than the unknown only existing Which I love, space. yeah. I mean, you think about all the unexpected 
unexplored space. Yeah, it's still the only place in, in the Earth planet that we have unexplored is in the deep ocean. I think it's like something like 60%. Yeah, of ridiculous amount of the ocean is still unexplored. Yep. Moving back onto dry land, though, we're going to jump forward <laughs> like just a, a few years and talk. The Firm. Mm -hmm. This is uh, John Grisham. Not just Grisham. dry land, but solid firm yeah. land. This is like the early days of the John Grisham explosion yes. in uh, uh, Hollywood. You know, the Pelican Brief, I believe, was the same yes. year. The Client was the following yeah. year. So I he kind of talk about knocking it out the park. There. Well, I, yeah. I feel like this is why Law and Order exists, uh, is because the success well, of the... John Grisham. To be 90s. fair, to be fair, I think it might actually be the other way around. Really? I think Law and Order started in 1990. So Has it really been it around 20 23 years, years ago? Yeah. 23. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Man, yeah. that is nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. And you know, I mean, it, I, I, fine. Screw you, Grisham. You only <laughs> piggybacked off of Law and Order success. That's right. I said it. You know, yeah, see, 1990. <laughs> God, um, that is nuts. Yeah, I, it just blew my mind, Spencer. So, Woo! Like something about law in the 80s. I mean, law. Well, um, L.A. law was big oh, down there too. I, I remember things LA were law. blowing up legally and he was just the the sort of epicenter of mm -hmm. it i mean him and dick wolf clearly yeah uh story of a young uh, attorney who's just out of college who gets a job at a dream firm turns out that dream firm might not be quite so squeaky the clean. Double, double edged sword yep. of stuck do i get powerful and, and uh, give up all my morals or do i throw it all away and screw my whole career exactly yeah and uh, he's uh caught up uh, by an FBI agent played by Ed Harris who's yes. trying to get him to give him the goods on the firm who's working with the mob. Um, yeah, that's right. I forgot they were working The lead with the mob. played by Tom Cruise, mm -hmm. the FBI agent, said Ed Harris, you know. Uh, it is a really sort of classic sort of thriller in that, like, you know, he, I mean, what can he do? He's either going to lose everything no matter what he does, and yet he's trying to figure out a way to save himself. I mean, maybe it's a little bit Hollywoody in that regard, but, uh, I mean, this is a, one of those great sort of Tom Cruise movies again yeah. that people generally forget about. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't hear anyone talk about this. And this is when he still looked pretty young. I mean, you yeah. look at like the poster, he looks oh, totally. pretty young. Three years later, he's in Mission Impossible. And he's like the veteran agent. It's crazy to think how quickly he must have yeah. aged during those three years. Yeah, seriously. And, uh, you know, it's funny to think about this film was... Uh, uh, you think about Holly Hunter's in yeah. this movie. She's she was nominated for supporting actress. Yeah, she's she's only in the movie for five minutes yeah. and fifty nine seconds. Bang for the buck factor. Right the there, shortest um, performances ever nominated for an Oscar. Another uh, short. Uh, it, interestingly enough, it seems like Ed Harris likes to be in movies where people have short roles that they get mm. Oscar nominations, as we'll talk about again later. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, his role. I mean. I don't want to say is one a little bit more one dimensional. I mean, he's very mm -hmm. much sort of pursuit of a cause. Yeah. But you know, I, I mean, I, I like that he embraces roles, big or small, and he's such a such a likable guy. Even though you know, good or bad, it's yeah. hard to hard to dislike him. And he, he's very he's very personable. I would yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, totally. And the thing that sort of kills me about this is that the film is two and a half hours. Do you remember this film being that long? No. I don't. Remember. I don't remember any movies in the like pre-95 being two and a half hours outside of like 2001 and Ben-Hur like which, the, the epics you which know? is funny because like, you know yeah it's it's you think about these epics but yeah there's we as we go through all like these the films, day of 90 minutes yeah well <laughs> That's what that's the impression. But you know, also I uh, got to give a shout out to the director Sidney Pollock, the oh, guy yeah. who's often forgot or who's so many classic oh, projects. Oh seriously, you know, you think back. Let's see. Um, did he do Popeye, or am I thinking of somebody else? No, you're th I think it's Altman. Yeah, Let's see, you're right. He did um, Three Days of the Condor, uh, Tootsie, Out of oh, Africa. Yeah. You know, thinking. so you know, dude was a prolific director, yeah. and so it's it's. I mean, it's it's one of those ones that you got to remember because mm -hmm. he's so and talented. It, and, and you know, not like Pelican Brief is a bad movie, but this is definitely, I think, a better movie than I think. This is the one of the stronger. Ooh, I, I don't know. I really like the Grishams. Pelican Brief. Uh, th this. Uh, Pelican Brief and Client are all my favorite ones, so it's kind of amazing that they all kind of came out <laughs> like right. Like a two-year period. Yeah, it was, real, it was a good. It was a good two years mm -hmm. for him. Moving just a couple years uh, forward was the point which Ed Harris really broke yes. for me, and we're talking Apollo 13. Yes. This is the Ron Howard drama about the Apollo 13 mission, which went sideways, and they mm -hmm. had to scramble failed. to try and figure out how to get them say back. Failed mission to Mars or yeah. to moon. The moon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, starring Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Paxton, Kevin Gary Bacon, Sinise. Gary Sinise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Reteaming Gary Sinise and uh, Tom Hanks just mm -hmm. one year after Force Gun. Mm -hmm. So it's very mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Ed Harris playing the chief down yes, in Yes, uh, Gene Kranz, yeah. The Houston. 
commander? Yes. You know, I, I mean, this is sort of a really changing point for me. I mean, I was probably, what, 13 when this came out. Uh, I mean, I've seen Ed Harris and things before, and, you know, I knew Ron Howard around, but this was the point at which I realized, like, okay, the guy from Happy Days is actually yeah. a pretty talented director. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really think about, you know, like backdraft and stuff being him or Splash or whatever. Definitely. Um, but this agree. is the point where I was like, wow, this guy is really talented. And Ed Harris, likewise, is like, I've seen this guy before, but now I know who Ed Harris is. Yeah. And it makes sense that after this, he sort of blew up. And I think much. this is, I mean, what, after this was like from the Earth to the moon or whatever. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, this is when Tom Hanks really got into space. Yeah. Like, he totally. really, like, just not like, hey, I'll act in them, but like, as a producer. producer yeah. No, totally. And, I mean, I don't know if many people remember, but A, the film was nominated for Best Picture. Wow. Which is pretty amazing. You know, it's, Did it win? No. No. Sadly, sadly, no. But, but you this know. This was what, 93? So, this is, or 96? Yeah, 96. So, this be what, like, um,. I'll pull it up here in a minute. But you also got to remember that Ed Harris mm -hmm. was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Oh, that's right. This is the same year Kevin Spacey was in The yes. Usual Suspects. So yes. the the competition he was up against was crazy. And I love I love his role in this movie, but it's sort of one of those things that, you know, <laughs> if it were maybe a different year, I might have been a little bit more receptive in winning. You basically but, put any movie against Usual Suspects, and Spencer is probably going to pick Usual Suspects. Probably, but I mean, he, this, the competition he was up against this year just happened to be remarkably stiff. I mean, let's see, it, uh, Braveheart won for Best Picture, oh. which is, I mean, I don't know, you know, I could go either way. I think Braveheart's a pretty awesome I think film, Braveheart's too. Braveheart's pretty amazing. But Apollo 13's not a slouch as no. well. And uh, I give Babe a sort of outsider's uh, run at that, because I really love that movie. Babe. That'll do, pig. Exactly. But you also have James Cromwell nominated. You had Brad Pitt for 12 Monkeys, oh, Tim Roth for Rob Roy. It was a great Ooh. year for supporting actors. So, you know, uh, unfortunate that he did not win, but, you know, nevertheless, it was uh, a pretty impressive crop to be. Yes. The not amongst. a bad list to be yeah. have your name amongst. Yeah. And just carrying on that momentum in terms of stardom, just one year later we're talking The Rock yeah. this is the Michael Bay Jerry Bruckheimer classic one of only the two that have been criterion to Michael Bay's yes one of the only the only Michael Bay movie I love yeah, that's great. I think it's one of the most balanced action films I've ever seen. You know, got land action, air yep. action, hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons, mm -hmm. you know, vehicle action, you know. And, and interestingly enough, as I, you know, I love to point out things that I don't like about Michael Bay, but my problem with Michael Bay is often that his tongue is a little bit too much in his cheek. Mm. And the, it's interesting because this film, according to Michael Bay, the script was written with much more straight and serious uh, than the final film actually mm. came out. Most of the humor that that came out in the film was ad-libbed or improvised by the actors and as they were actually doing it. Which I think maybe is what keeps it a little bit more grounded in like having a serious tone underneath, but then having people react humorously sure. to situations, which is much more realistic. Yeah. People crack jokes when they're nervous. No, totally, you're absolutely right. And this is also uh, the end of the Don Simpson, Jerry Bruckheimer era. This is uh, right. the point in which Don Simpson unfortunately died due yes. to Hollywood excess the dude loved. Loved him some drugs. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it, I mean, it sort of typifies their sort of action sensibility. Dirt. And it's, it's, I mean, you know, you think about the casting of, like, it's such an eclectic, interesting cast that yeah. you don't necessarily want to think about. It. Like, Nicolas Cage is one of those guys who sort of been very hit or miss. You yeah. have other people like... Especially William, in action. William Forsyth, Return of Michael Bean, reteaming yeah. with Ed Harris. Uh, Vanessa Marcel, John C. McGinley, Tony Todd, a whole bunch of sort of various Sean Connery. People. Sean Connery. Um, and it's funny to think, you know, the leads of... Oh, it's largely associated with Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage because mm -hmm. they're sort of the heroes of the movie. Yes. But Ed Harris is completely as important in the movie. Yeah. A, he's driving sort of the the evil in the movie, but yes. also he's not doing it because he's an evil guy. He's doing it because he thinks that these soldiers need to be given some yes. credit. He's He considers himself heroic. It's everybody else that thinks he's a bad guy. Well, it's also he never had any intention of actually killing anyone, mm -hmm. despite what you know the other villains might be led Michael to believe. <laughs> no, he's not a villain. He's oh, the SEAL right. guy that's who's right. trying yeah, to kill yeah, yeah. him. That's right. Doesn't work out so well for him. No, more like uh, Tony Todd uh, and uh, yes, was it yes. uh, Bokeem uh, Woodbine who are like, what do you mean we're not going to do mm -hmm. it? Kill do them all. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, it, I mean, I just, I, I think it's such a fun movie. It's so, it, the acting is so pitch perfect for it and I just... And, and I mean, it's one of those ones that's like, it could have so easily gone wrong considering how many other... You know, oh, totally, like, yeah. I mean, but, and, and... I, uh, 
to highlight that point. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was originally offered the role of Mason wow. that Sean Connery took. Uh, That's crazy. At the time, the script was only 80 pages, quote, with a lot of handwriting and scribbles, and it didn't seem fully baked. It's hard to imagine, though, him like a father figure, sort of yeah. like Sean Connery ends up being. Sort of yeah, or game. like any kind of special agent. I can't imagine a big, beefy, huge, muscle, roided out yeah, guy being not like a secret in. agent yeah. of any kind. I mean, this is like the time when he was in like stuff like Eraser. Yeah, that's, so, yeah, that's yeah, true. I don't, mm, I don't see mm, that working mm, out. Too me well, neither. But, you know, still a great film. Yeah, still a great still film. Still a really good film. And just moving right along, you know, he just continued to pump out that quality work, and he had The Truman Show. Yes. This is the sort of faux reality story about a man whose entire life has been uh, filmed, and he lives yes. in an and artificial environment, played by Jim Carrey. Yes. All, of course, he's unaware of. Yes. Yeah. And the reality show is produced by Ed Harris's Kristoff. Yes. You know, very sort of Christ-like name. Um... Good point. I don't think. Of. But you know this, 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 especially because it's even spelled C H rather than yeah. K R. Uh, this came out really right around the same time as Ed TV. Yes, with Both. Matthew McConaughey yep. and Jenna Elfman. Yep. And this one was very much more sort of a grandiose sort of out there one. Ed TV feels like it's extrapolated much more to where we are now. Yeah, to the Big Brother style. But lifestyle. the scary thing is, I feel like in the long run, the Truman Show might actually end up being true. I mean, mm. I feel like this is becoming increasingly more like Where people we just want to trick someone into film. Well, yeah, we want we want to see like what true reality is. Yeah, because reality people... TV is definitely not real. It's it's not. <laughs> it's no, the so, most manufactured yeah. reality of yeah. the whole time. And it's a, it's funny to think about, you know, this again, once again, you know, uh Ed Harris, nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate that he didn't win, and he's never won an Academy Award. Oh, that's horrible. Despite being nominated uh, a handful of times. He's been nominated, let's see, for Apollo 13, Truman Show. He was nominated in, for lead in Pollock, mm. and supporting again for The Hour. So three supporting, one wow. lead. Sadly, not won any of them, but do deserve And, you know, them. I mean, here he is getting us... A Best Supporting Actor Oscar, and Dennis Hopper was originally cast as Kristoff. Wow, but that he, would be so different. Yeah, I he walked off the set after the first day, so it's not even like he was, you know, going got the offer and turned down the role. He was full on there for the first, and then first day filming, left. They it's, replaced him with Ed Harris. It's hard. It's hard to imagine that vision of it. I mean, I guess we should not be surprised though that it's such a fun interesting movie because it's written by Andrew Nichol who did, you know, like right. Gattaca. Yes. And it's directed by Peter Weir who's done yes. stuff such as, you know, Witness, Dead Poet Society, Master and Commander. So it's it's such a, a solid, interesting production. This is sort of the change in uh, Jim Carrey when he started to try and do dramatic, yeah. which was great. In fact, the, all the cast was for, uh, cast and crew on the whole set the entire time they were filming were forbidden to ever utter around or to Jim Carrey any of the lines from his funny movies. Wow. So there was no like referencing Ace Ventura the Mask. They were supposed to like leave that behind, focus on what they were doing. I also that. think it's interesting that I just never something one of those things that's like cleverly done that I never realized because I wasn't that knowledgeable when I first saw this movie, but every street name in Sea Heaven refers to a movie actor. Wow, that's Lancaster cool. Square, Barrymore Road, and all the cast members are likewise named after movie stars. Oh, that's funny. Meryl, Marlon, Lauren, Kirk, Angela, etc. Very nice. So. Sadly, you know, Jim Carrey has not gotten the respect he deserves. No nominations for him. Wow. The, the only nominations for this film were Ed Harris. Okay. Best director for, or nominated for best director Peter Weir. Okay. And best writing, uh, for directly for the screen for Andrew Nichol. Wow. That's it. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's so amazing because... People, I think people were not expecting Jim Carrey to be that good, which is why I think it should, it's surprising that he didn't yeah. get any kind of nomination. I, I feel, but I feel, then he did Eternal Sunshine a couple of years later. Eternal Sunshine. Oof. I feel like um, Man on the Moon mm -hmm. is great. You know, I feel like The Majestic is underappreciated. Yeah. Dude, dude can do dramatic. I just feel like he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Yeah. Because he's. And every so now funny. and then he gets some movies like number twenty three, and then just nobody cares. Just there's been a lot of those lately. Mr. More, Mr. Popper's Penguins. Yeah, there's been there's been more of those lately than you want to give him credit. <laughs> Uh, but a few years later, though, Ed Harris reteamed with Ron Howard. Mm -hmm. You know, good things happened the last time. Good things happened this time. Yeah, they did. We're talking A Beautiful Mind. Yes. This is the biopic about John, John Nash, Nash, who yeah. was a mathematician who created um, game theory. Yeah. One of the more influential sort of uh, theories of the last, I don't know, 50 years that or whatever. That they use heavily in cryptology. Yes. Um, Cryptography? I forget which one. And, it was. Cryptography, I think. Yeah. Unfortunately... 
guy kind of had some psychological problems. Yes. He was a schizophrenic. Yeah, I think um, a misogynist or oh, pre- yeah. racist. I forget. Uh, prejudice. Which. Yeah, he was yeah. definitely prejudiced. Um, you know, I think he was homophobic. I think it was all sorts of stuff. Homosexual. Like, Close. Uh, he was also uh, anti-Semitic, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. maybe that's the purchase we're thinking about. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going wrong <laughs> with that. Like, uh, I mean, it's... He was a troubled individual, yes. let's just say. And he was also alive. I think he's still alive. Yeah, he, he was is. alive at the time the movie was being made. So, you know, when you have a troubled individual still alive, it's kind of interesting. Well, that was part of the thing that was sort of the difficulty with the movie that uh, was... Uh, there was sort of this... I, I don't know if you want to call it, a campaign against it when it was mm, coming out mm-hmm. about how he wasn't necessarily a likable guy. The film yeah. paints him as a, ver- a fr- pretty yeah, likable guy. It definitely guy. puts a rosy color yeah. to his and life. And they're sort of like, you know, when Oscars were coming out, they're sort of like, oh yeah, by the way, this guy's kind of an asshole, yeah. you know? So. I mean, to, and, you know, they even went so far as to create a golden look for the campus scenes in the mm. film by using a low contrast stock and exposing it, exposing it to orange light before loading it into the camera. So, I mean, they even were trying to make Rosy it a, gl- a fuzzy, happy-looking film. I mean, there's so this film works for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I think Ron Howard did an excellent job with it. You know, he picked he picked the story pretty well to make it work. I mean, what, um, Jennifer Connelly busting uh, out? Jennifer, I, I predicted she was going to win the Academy Award just for watching the trailer. I was like, wow, she looks like she's going to be good in that. I bet she wins the Academy Award, and sure enough, she did. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one Best Picture, uh, you know... Russell Crowe was nominated, but this was right during the renaissance of Russell oh, yeah. Crowe. I mean, what Gladiator was what the same two year? years, two years before oh, this, right, and then 99. I think Master and Commander was a few years after this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it, like he was getting nominated for everything during this period, and so yes. it, I don't think he had thrown a phone at somebody yet by this point in time. No, 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 <laughs> no, he hadn't. But you know, it's 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 a great film. I mean, I think it might be a little bit. Um, for a film that won Best Picture, I think it's somewhat forgotten. Yeah, I mean, I mean, people like it. I'm not saying it's nobody thinks of it, but I don't, I don't hear people reflecting upon it now and, or and revisiting it. Maybe it's that forgotten element of the film that made Premier Magazine uh, name it one of the 20 most overrated movies of all time. I feel like that's perhaps a little harsh, but yeah. But know. again, you know, with with any kind of like top list, you gotta you gotta you gotta explain your criteria beforehand. Yeah. You you can't say the ten best movies and then expect people to, you know, not be upset unless you're like the ten best movies for me between eighty seven and ninety. You know, like that's much more specific. It's harder to argue with that. So, you know, who knows what their criteria was. Maybe it was things that got were successful and got a lot of critical acclaim, but then were never talked about again. And this is one of those interesting films because it really takes you within the world of a schizophrenic. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, because, like, a whole bunch of the characters don't exist. Yes. Like, in fact, the majority of them don't mm-hmm. exist. You know, like, um, Paul his, Bettany doesn't his, exist. His, like, roommate, right? I think it's... A- yes. Uh, Ed Harris, who's, who's, like, contact in yeah, the government, yeah. doesn't exist. Like... Yeah, um, I think it's, like, uh, Paul Bettany's, like... Either kid or friend that has a kid doesn't exist. Yeah, as the well. little girl. Yeah, 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 the little girl. There's a whole scene where she runs through a field of doves and none of them move. Yeah, that's one of the big yeah, no. hints. That it's 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 it's. I I think I think it's a solid film, but mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's it's somewhat somewhat forgotten, unfortunately. Yes. Let's move right along. Uh, shortly thereafter, sort of. I don't know if you want to call it like as. Ed Harris's career has somewhat started to tail off a little mm. bit. We have A History of Violence. Yes. We're talking David Cronenberg here. Indeed. Based on a graphic novel, I, I believe, believe it yeah. is. Yeah. About a former gangster who wants to put his life, his previous life behind him. Yes. He moves to a small town, gets a little family, you know. With, and uh, unfortunately, Maria Bello. Maria Bello, who's mm. very attractive in the movie. Uh, and a great actress. Uh, no, she's a great actress as well, but she, <laughs> I, I mean... Payback is one of my favorite films. Oh, yes. I love that movie. She's fantastic in that as well. Yes. Um, not gonna not gonna say anything bad about Maria Bello. She's great no. across the board. But you know, unfortunately, his previous life catches up with him. Specifically, Ed Harris, who plays uh, the mobster Carl Fogarty. Yes. Um, and you know, shit kind of goes sideways, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and he's forced to sort of revisit his past life. Uh, top line by Viggo Mortensen, who yes, was that's right. blowing up. After oh God, his yeah. success in Lord of the Rings, it's it's kind of an interesting film. Probably one of the more digestible Cronenberg. Oh, films. definitely the most like publicly accessible yeah. Cronenberg film. Yeah. Which is funny because when I first saw the film, I don't think I knew it was Cronenberg, and I was like, it doesn't feel like his I, other stuff. I was like, wow, this movie is way more entertaining, way more violent, and like, you know, 
edgy than I thought it was going to be. And then I was like, oh, David Cronenberg. Well, now it seems tame. <laughs> there, there, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, you're right. And it's Sometimes sort, perspective. Can he's he's sort of one of those interesting guys, you know, like Gus Van Zandt, mm -hmm. who every so often, like most of his stuff is, is interesting and challenging, but every so often he does like a Goodwill Hunting or yeah. Milk, where it's yeah. a much more yeah. crowd-pleasing, accessible mm -hmm. film that, you know, garners attention, like Academy Awards, like this got nominations for screenplay, adapted screenplay, and uh, supporting actor for mm. William Hurt. Oh, yeah, who was also in the movie for like 10 minutes or something. And granted, ridiculous. you know, Ed Harris isn't in it for a ton of time. No. I mean, his character has a very sort of short uh, shelf term, life. Yeah, yeah, shelf life. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I like that he's willing to be, you know, the good guy, the mm -hmm. bad guy. This is probably, of the ones we've talked about, the most villainous yes. role he's done. And Definitely. I mean, he's, he's willing to do the lead role, he's willing to do the supporting role. And this is sort of, you know, after. Those last few nominations we mentioned with yeah, Pollock, Pollock and, and Hours. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. I mean, this is sort of kind of when he started to fade out of vogue, unfortunately, I feel like. Sadly. Weirdly enough, in 2005, I, I would have thought this would have happened years prior, but 2005, this movie had the distinction for being the last major Hollywood movie to be released on VHS. Seems about right for Cronenberg with video drama. Yeah, that's I mean, true. It seems like it's just still crazy to me that there was still VHS coming out. Like, major, new releases were still coming out on VHS Dude, in 2005. People who love VHS. Love it. Still, I, know. I, I saw a documentary at South by Southwest this year where some people were arguing that VHS quality is still better than DVD. So it's the new vinyl. It's I was the, like, it's I, the visual I format. Vinyl. I don't know how that's even believable. Which is funny. Like, which the funniest part to me about that is that Beta Max has always been superior to VHS yeah. in that field. Yeah. That was the whole problem with that is that Sony didn't want to give up the copyrights. Copyright, so someone yeah. made VHS and it Open gave it to format, everyone. Yeah, yeah. it's like. It was even at its time. It wasn't the best of its kind. That's I mean, come on. That's that's why Netflix has succeeded. Is because instead of make they were initially going to make their own box. Yeah. But they just had to make it like an app so that it could be on everyone's box, and so they don't have to make the hardware or yep. whatever. They just rake in the dough. And Smart man, they do. They get more uh, now. They consider streaming on its ratings. They have a higher ratings than HBO. That's crazy. Or any major network. It's crazy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, all right, that brings us to this Friday, yes. April 26th. We're talking pain and gain. This Which is we hope would be more of a gain, but it's probably more of a pain. It is. I can, I've seen it, and I can verify that. This is uh, Michael Bay's latest, reteaming with Michael Bay once yep. again. Uh, this is Michael Bay's response to people criticizing him for only being able to do $100 million films. Which I will give him credit. The fact that he listened enough to even care and choose another project, that's kind of admirable. I'll, I'll take that one step more and say that... The film totally looks in line with everything. If I didn't know he'd made it for like twenty, twenty-five million dollars, oh, really it? I, I thought it, I thought would have thought it would be a hundred million dollar film. Yeah, I, I mean, mean the, in the cast trailer alone, still, yeah, trailer and cast look like right up there with Bad Boys. Well, I'm just saying, like the cast alone probably cost like three quarters of the budget. I can't imagine. I mean, you got Mark Wahlberg. Dwayne Johnson and Anthony Mackie as three um, trainers who decide to kidnap a guy for his money. Based uh, on a true story. Based on a true story. Unfortunately, things go sideways. <laughs> based on. Yeah, and uh, you know they have to deal with the consequences of that decision. Mobster was uh, Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. Right? I don't know if he's. I don't know or what except the he's the criminal. Cr yeah, he's a criminal. Um, and you know he gets away. Um, it gets to this weird situation where the cops don't believe him, so he hires Ed Harris uh -huh. as a former private detective to you know, find Help out which... track down these dudes. And well, they know they know oh, who okay. they are. That's the problem. Like they just don't believe that his story. His story is so Perfect. implausible about bodybuilders kidnapping him, Perfect. holding him hostage. Uh, so Ed Harris is the one who sets out to sort of prove that he's actually telling the truth. Gotcha. And you know it's. I mean. It's, it's, it's probably going to do okay with audiences. The thing that killed me about it was a the main characters. The majority of characters are unlikable. Ed Harris is Ed Harris and Rebel Wilson hmm. are pretty much the only two likable characters in the movie. Unfortunately, they're both supporting roles, and the film has so much narration. Like hmm. 30, 40 percent of the film Whoa. is narrated, and it's from different people. It it's keeps a lot switching. Of narration. It's a lot. It's it's one of the most narrated. Fictional films I've ever seen. It's Makes Ocean Eleven look narration light. Yeah, sorry, it's not a fictional film. You're right. It is a true story. Narrative film. It's one of the most yeah, so. narrated narrative films there we I've go. ever seen. Um, gotta, you know, gotta make sure we don't piss off the yeah exactly. definitionists. Don't, don't I don't know if that's a word. I want to piss you <laughs> we'll off. We'll start it now. <laughs> you know, I'm usually a bit of a Michael Bay defender, but like yeah. even I found this film to be challenging. It's just, it's not. 
I, go back to making hundred million dollar films. I would rather see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, movie. I would rather see I Transformers Four. Nope. Uh, nope. Just don't don't do this. How about just stop making movies? No. That'd be cool. He 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 is one of those guys that you know he might not hit it. It's sort of like Zack Snyder. Okay. Okay. I, I think he's a very talented I can see guy. That. But I feel like when he's left too much to his own devices, you get sucker punch. Yeah. And so if so, you know if Christopher Nolan or somebody partnered with him, J.J. Abrams, I don't care, somebody yeah. very talented That's came true. in and worked with him on a project, I feel like his visual sen- visual sensibilities and his sense for you know he's pretty good about comedic timing. Yeah. He's pretty good about action. You might be able to slow it down or whatever. But his it, the scene design is very well done. I will agree it, with that. As you know, I, I think I think he's he's a talented guy. You just need someone to rein him in, yeah. like uh, Richard Kelly, for instance. Mm-hmm. You know, another oh, guy. Yeah. If you rein him in, it'd be better. <laughs> so, you know, pain and gain, more pain than gain. But you know, and man, what are you gonna do? I, I like it, Harris. On it, I'm impressed that they managed to make The Rock more muscular. Oh, dude, all of the guys who play yeah. trainers look well, beefy. Mark Wahlberg's like shoulders like come up to his almost his ears in the. Per- in the trailer, it's ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's, like his it, shoulders it, aren't only that big. No, Mark Wahlberg is pretty built too. And that's what I'm saying. Mark Wahlberg's yeah, shoulders yeah. are like all, all the Anthony Mackie too. They're all really? super stacked. You know, <laughs> it's 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 an impressive one. The story is so crazy that I almost wish they had made a documentary rather than a narrative <laughs> film. But I mean, it's so it's so quirky. That's <laughs> yeah. It, 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 with unlikable people, it feels like documentary is usually the better way to go. So or really dark humor. Not you, like, you might like, like it for like that reason. It's, cl- it's closer to very bad things. I will say that <laughs> with more action. But you know, uh, let us know your thoughts about Ed Harris, which films you like, and uh, join us next time for our DVD rundown for the week of April 30th. April's over. April's over. That's it. Just more. like that. And as always, we're at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv, Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some badges. Leave some reviews on iTunes. Give us some thumbs on, hopefully, up thumbs on YouTube. Complain about how we didn't talk about Pollock or the right stuff because you hate us. Or Glengarry Glenn Ross. There's so many of them. Hours we could have talked God. about. I mean, dude, dude is every which way but loose. Yes. But uh, share the ones you he like or dislike. Every which way but loose. No, but he was <laughs> figurative yes, every way yes. which way loose. <laughs> um, and join us next time. We'll see you later, man. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's don't even try to buy the science that I Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.